Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going through the UFC Abu Dhabi card from a lineup construction perspective, where we're going to focus on how to win $100,000 that's being offered up for the person who can beat how many? Like several thousand entries and win it by him or herself. Now, uh, usually it doesn't work out that way. Usually the winner has to share it with some people, and that's that's fine too, but what we're trying to do is, is use the tools at our disposal to maximize the amount of money that we're going to win. And, and what we're trying to do is, is err on the side of going for the big prize. Uh, MMA is a very, you know, the, 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 the distribution curve is very, very wild. Um, and as a result, I want to embrace that variance and, and try to try to go for, you know, for unique lineups, if at all possible. And again, what makes DFS fun is, is that constant battle of trying to, you know, figure out how bad of a lineup you're willing to play, like in the name of, of getting unique and, and winning the whole thing. You know, this is not just about picking the lineup that's going to make optimal, because if it's going to split it with 40 people, who needs it? I know what you're saying. Well, I need it. What's, 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 what's bad about 9,000? I get it. But, but in the long run, that's just not what you want to do. You want to maximize the amount of money that you're taking in. And you want to avoid highly duplicated lineups that do not have that much of a greater chance to win than the less duplicated lineups. So uh, this, this video is not going to be focused on the best plays. I, I encourage you to look at the Thursday video for that. With one exception, I will say that, that I was probably a little bit too cavalier about dismissing uh, Umar as, as uh, a high upside play. Um, from the main event. I, I, I think that I underestimated the amount that he could score or who he might score in his wins. Um, so I'm not as down on him, at least from a who's the best play perspective as I was. But again, that's not what we're talking about here is who the best plays are. We're just talking about how to build lineups using the tools at our disposal. So what did we do so far? Uh, so we're starting this video. I already put my projections in and my ownership projections in. I fired up SaberSim and I ran 5,000 lineups. And the idea is that you should be able to come up with 150 lineups out of 5,000 that do what you want to do. Okay. And, and if you can't find your lineup in the top 5,000, you probably don't want it. The other thing I did was I did put a minimum salary of 47.5. So we're not going to get to anything under that. Um, I think that's an okay uh, limit. Uh, and as far as max salary, I'm not, I'm not setting a, a salary, a max salary requirement for the initial build, at least. Uh, we might consider doing that if we can't get the, you know, the, the portfolio right. But for now, we'll, 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 we'll come up with other ways to get high upside lineups other that, that could be unique other than reducing salary, at least to start off with. Now, uh, let's let's review what this slate's all about, by the way. It is a 13-fight card with one five-round fight, which is going to be obviously extremely popular. And what a 13-fight card means to me is that you only need to go about 75% cuckoo in building your lineups. In other words, if it was like a 20 fight card or a 30 fight card, for example, I could put 150, my best lineups that, you know, with some exceptions that I think are going to get optimal, not worry about dupes and just roll. Okay. Um, if there were 10 fights on the card, I would have to do just all kinds of crazy stuff. And I do it, you know, I'll do geo mean filtering, lower ownership. I will, leave salary on the table. I'll stack stuff that more people aren't doing. Uh, I'll, I'll set incredibly high upside uh, ranking uh, metrics. We'll get to that in a minute. For the 13 fight card, I think people do actually underestimate how hard it is to get unique on a 13 fight card. And, and most people will go usually about 75% normal plays, 25% cuckoo. I still think you need to go probably about 75% cuckoo. Um, at least 50%. And, and, and so what, what I'm going to suggest is you start off with 50% cuckoo lineups. And, and, and for those of you who've been following this, I, I, uh, for, 
you know, the last year that I've been doing these, the the most cuckoo <laughs> uh, uh, portfolio uh, ranking, the most cuckoo of the ranking systems is this MMA default setting that automatically comes up when SaberSim reach, run, runs your lineups. And not that many people even know this, okay? They see default and they're like, well, I don't want to play these guys. I don't know what they're talking about. But if you look into the MMA default setting, um, again, what you'll see, click this eyeball here, is this formula which, which, which tells you how it's ranking these lineups. And the key input is this 99th percentile input here. And we're not talking about the player necessarily, but but the lineup itself, like it's running this, this, it's simming this contest five trillion times or whatever it's doing. And in the 99th percentile outcome, this lineup is getting, and, and what that means is that this is the most aggressive way that I have right now to, to rate these lineups, okay? Um, now, it still dings it for ownership, minus three times some adjusted ownership, uh, et cetera. But this is this is the, the 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 cream of the crop as far as like going cuckoo. Now what I did was I created another metric that almost replicated it. I I took down the 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 initial formula and then instead of going 99th percentile, I went 95th percentile just to go a little bit more normal or anti cuckoo. Um, but some percentage of these rankings or rankings like them if you want to create your own have to be a big part of your portfolio and depending on how many lineups or how many fights it's going to determine how many you use like if it's a third 14 fight card i'll go with you know like a third of them i think for this card i think i have to go for at least 50 percent so what we're going to do is we're going to reserve 50 percent of the lineups at least for these settings. So let's start with the, the uh, MMA default setting. The MMA default setting, we'll pick, uh, let's just start with 35, because I, I want to use um, the, uh, whatchamacallit, the sheets default settings as well. Okay, 35, and then we'll put these, we'll save these into the save, into the favorites category. That's MMA default. Now we go down to sheets default. Let's just keep going back and forth between these two. And then we'll go here. We'll save these to the favorites. And 22 new ones were added. So now I have 57. Now let's go back, I guess, to MMA default. And we'll put another, put another 10 in. We got to get to 75, right? Let's put another five in from here. Well, not another five. Let's put... Uh, We'll do this, go to 40. And it added three. And then we'll go back to sheets default. And we'll go, well, let's make it 40 here as well. Four added 64. We want like 11 more. So let's go back. Let's just keep adding until at 70. We'll go back to MMA default. And Go up back to here. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. So now we have 85. And that's probably a little bit too much, but that's okay. I'd rather I'd rather too much of this than too little. Um, so now we have 85 lineups built that are just super duper aggressive. So what what do you do with the rest? Like like do you play? 65, for example, very conservative lineups with the idea that you, you know, on average, the portfolio is 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 aggressive. I don't think so. I mean, I, I don't think I think you have to go for the throat a little bit. I think you have to still be moderately aggressive with the remaining 65. And for that, we can use our our normal type build setting. So one of them is is is. Sim diversity 10, that's kind of like the main one. Um where it does listen, let's let's look at the want to look at it, let's look at the um at the eyeball here. So it's not bad. I mean, but it's like hundred times the sim optimals, 0.8 times the projection, and minus only 0.2 of the average ownership. So it doesn't give you a high high, you know, 99th percentile, 95th percentile. You also only dings your ownership by 0.2. 
So it's it's not it's not the best, okay, as far as like getting unique those. It's definitely great as far as like figuring out what's going to be optimal. So you do have to do something a little bit different within this setting, okay? Whether that be maybe geo mean filtering, whether that be um, leaving salary on the table, okay? I think either of those things work. I am kind of down on, on geo mean filtering in general, um, just because when you do that, just the way the math works, with doing product ownerships and things like that, you just end up getting like the, whoever the lowest fighter is, you just get too much in. I don't say too much, but you get you get him, right, or her. And that's not what you're really trying to accomplish. I, I'd much rather do more lineups from the MMA default setting than do something like that. So we got to, I guess, leave money on the table as far as this is concerned for the remaining 65. Um, so the question is going to be how much? You can go on this slate as much as a thousand, like if you wanted to. And the reason why I say a thousand is because of this Rolando Bedoya play. Okay, so Rolando Bedoya is going to be a very popular underdog here, okay, um, for a, a lot of reasons. Um, not to mention the fact that he's got, he's almost a pick him now. I mean, the line has been, been moving. And what's kind of neat is that, is that Jai Herbert, even though, uh, uh, it's not like a great play anymore. He still has a, a projection that's higher than Bedoya. So the idea is that if you're going to play Bedoya and he's going to be popular, you should probably leave like some money on the table. And I think a thousand is kind of a cool amount because, because in, in lineups that have Bedoya that have a thousand left on the table, they're going to be especially unique because the optimizers would normally spend that thousand on Herbert, you know? So you can go as much as a thousand on the table using Bedoya as that, that, that linchpin. Um, look, you could you look at Sandhagen as a popular underdog, but we're not leaving 2,200 on the table there. The other, I guess, sort of popular underdog, when I scroll through this, I, I would say Elvis Brenner, but I don't think so. I mean, Elvis Brenner, I think he's not going to really get that much love because Alvarez's metrics are so strong. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but so we'll, 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 we'll deal with this Bedoya business. So do we really want to leave a thousand on the table? I mean, why not? I guess. Um, so we're going to have, so you're saying Eric, that we're going to have half the lineups like our cuckoo and half leaving a thousand on the table. I, I guess we don't have to do that. <sighs> maybe leave a little less. What's another break point though? You know, what, what's another break point? Another break point is, I guess, what, what does it take to get from Bedoya up to like the next like person in the range, I guess, that, that projects higher than him? Uh, what about Loopy? Lo does Loopy project higher than, than, than Bedoya? No. Let's just take a look at projections here. So projections for Bedoya, 57. He's higher, so we can leave 800. He's higher, we can leave 1,000. He's higher. Well, Dern is higher. We can leave 600. So we could leave 600. Or no one's going to play due to COVID, really. So yeah, so th th so this is what we could do. You, we could leave six hundred on the table in some, and a thousand on the table in others. So why don't we do this? Why don't we do that for the remainder of the lineups, and we'll split them between this set and the sims. Okay, so let's start. So what do we have? Eighty-five. Um, so we have sixty-five left. So we'll do thirty. We'll do fifteen from each set. With 600 and with 1,000. Okay, so let's start with Sim Diversity 10. We'll start with 15. And then we're going to add filter. And let's see if we can get to the 1,000 first. Uh, salary less than 49,100. So this is Sim Diversity at 1,000. Okay. 
Sim diversity to 1,000. Oh, okay, there's 15. So let's save these to the favorites. And then we're going to go, we'll get rid of that, and we'll do the same thing for 600. Uh, so less than 49.5, right? Is that what we're doing? Salary less than 49,500. That's good. 15, save these. So now we got to do, we got to run a sim, right? We already, we already put the settings in here and we're going to use just flagship MME, save settings. And then we're going to run the sims. And one thing you'll notice, like I said, I haven't checked to see who we have. And I think that's important. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm abiding by my process. And if, if, if I'm going to go through this process and then just at the end say, oh, you know, I don't care. I don't want 32% of Shamil Gazia. Then I haven't really been shooting my process. We're just going to just, we're going to fire this. I'm going to save my big, who I like for the big buy-ins. Um, but for this thing, we're just, we're just, we're just processing here. Uh, all right. So let's uh, look at throwdown, risk adjusted ROI. And we're going to take 15, leaving 1,000 on the table. Salary less than 1,000. Oh, not 1,000, about 49,100. And we're probably going to get some dupes, so it's not going to be able to probably add them all. Let's just like, for example, look at this favorites. It only added 13 because I already had two of them in there already. Okay, so then we're going to go 49,600, go 500. We're probably going to get some dupes there as well. 13 added to the favorites. So now we have 141. So we have nine lineups left. Um, let's just, let's just do another couple more. Five added, so 146. We'll do another two, another four maybe from this group. So now we got 150 and we're in business. And that's it. You know, we're just going to upload these to the uh, to uh, to DraftKings and kind of roll with it, and 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 not look at who we have. And and you think I'm joking? I don't. Uh, now again, I might do this whole process again uh, before you know before things lock tomorrow, if anything changes. But I don't really check to see who I have until the slate unlocks. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to talk myself into into abandoning my process. Um, okay, that's it. Uh, and the way we're going to judge this, and we'll do probably a video tomorrow where we we get to reveal the amount of uniqueness that we kept, that we had. Um, I don't really have any particular goals. I mean, the more unique lineups I get, the more under five dupes I get. That's great. And uh, we'll see. Again, this is just to give you some ideas of, of how do use Saber Sim, and uh, we're applying it to this particular slate, but this should be translating into all your other slates. All right. Good luck, everybody. Thank mm -hmm. you.